are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is my favorite time of year. It's Women in Translation Month, the entire month of August, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. There are some famous booktubers that have a sh very short little readathon, which is fantastic, I'm sure. It is from August 14th to August 20th, and that is put on by Kendra Winchester and I believe Matthew Shrappa and. Um, Jennifer of it insert literary pun. I'll put a link to Kendra's announcement video, which just came out today. I will be reading Women in Translation for the entire month, and I pretty much read books by women in translation year round, but I like to do it even more intensely in August. And this year I have ro got myself roped into reading the Booker long list, so I'm not going to go crazy like I usually do. I have a TBR of four books, and I have two buddy reads, so that's six, which is like a fraction of what I typically try to read during Women in Translation Month. I have some backups, I'll tell you about those, but, but before I get started, I should also, of course, say that Women in Translation Month is uh, something that was created by a book blogger named Metal Radzinski, and I'll put a link to her blog in the show notes as well. I am going to read my fourth book by someone who has become one of my very most favorite writers, and that is the Norwegian writer Cora Sandell. And this is a collection of her short stories. You can see how glossy it is and how on interesting the cover is. This is obviously one of those print-on-demand jobbies, but um, that's how I could get it. So these are uh, stories and sketches translated from the Norwegian with an introduction by Elizabeth Rokan, who has translated her other stuff. So I can now say with certainty that this is my fourth year to participate in Women in Translation Month because the first year I did the first of the Alberta Trilogy by Cora Sandell, Alberta and Jacob. My second year, the second book in the trilogy, Alberta and Freedom. And last year, the third, Alberta Alone. All of them translated just with so much panache and virtuosity by Elizabeth Rokan. I would say she's one of my very most favorite translators, certainly who isn't alive. I'm looking at you, Tina. <laughs> and I'm just deeply in love with this woman, Cora Sandell, and her writing. So, the trilogy's finished. I have uh, this collection of her short fiction, so I will be reading, starting to read that for Women in Translation Month. It was first published in 1986. In Norwegian, they were public. These stories and pieces were published anywhere from 1904, wow, to 1972, I think. I am going to be doing double duty with this one because I am taking part in the in Invisible Cities reading project on BookTube this year, and August is Korea is one of is one of the countries for August. So I have this book dying to get to it. So I'm going to read it for both Invisible Cities and Women in Translation Month, and that is I'll Go On by Huang Jung Un, translated from the Korean by Emily Ye Wan. This is supposed to be absolutely amazing. It's in these very attractive Tilted Access Press editions, and this was kind of a trade, a book trade uh, with the Irish novelist Ronan Hessian, who. I sent some, sent him some books that I didn't want to keep, and he said, well, let me send you this. This is one of my favorite Korean novels of late, and now I'm going to finally get to it. Wang Jong-un has published two collections of short stories and three novels to date. It is about a, a pair of sisters, and the older sister finds out that her younger sister, who she has kind of raised ever since their father died in a freak accident, and her mother kind of had a maybe mental collapse with an overpowering grief, that this younger sister is now pregnant. That's all I need to know about the premise. Certainly looking forward to this. And also in, in uh, Tilted Axis edition is this Women Dreaming by Salma, translated by the Tamil by the uh, noted novelist in her own right, Mina Kandasamy. I've heard really good things about this too. And this is... Well, I think the title says it all. It's about women dreaming. This is set in 
a tiny Muslim village in Tamil Nadu. So the fourth one is going to be an African novel in translation, and I'm considering two. One doesn't get released until about August 20th, so that would be something I'd read late in the month. Let's see, when is the publication date? August 15th. So if I can, if it's in stock and I can order it from somewhere that it'll get delivered to me in time, that's what I'll do. But if it gets, if there's a delay in the publication date or a delay in the shipping date, I have a backup. But uh, if, all, if everything goes tickety-boo, it is one from one of my new favorite publishers, Seagull Books. Season of the Shadow by Leonora Miano. And this is a novel from Cameroon. I read another novel in translation by a gay writer who was born in Cameroon earlier this year, and it's piqued my interest to read more Cameroonian literature. And this is translated from the French by Gila or Gila Gila Walker, a brutal and dreamlike story about the first victims of the transatlantic slave trade. Not a light read. I'm not into light reads. Oh, uh, there is one of my Goodreads friends. We're not really friends, but <laughs> we call each other friends on Goodreads. And he, or she, she, it's very confusing because she has a male portrait, a, little, a picture of a man as her avatar on Goodreads. I've just recently discovered, no, it actually is a woman, and she gave it five stars, and she is quite fussy. And then my backup is an older novel from Africa, which I can read for free on the Internet Archive website. I'll put a link to that website if you don't know what it is. It's fabulous for free access to books that have been scanned online. It's not by, connected to Google, I don't think, that you can read for free. And they have a lot of stuff that you can't find, like at, to buy as an ebook. But they have it available to, to loan, they loan it to you for one day or two hours or 14 days or whatever. Had really good, good luck with them. It's out of print stuff. The Strange Bride by Grace Ogot, a Kenyan author. She died in 2015. She was one of the first Anglo Anglophone female Kenyan writers to be published. And she went on to become a member of parliament. Translated from the Luo language by... Okoth Okombo. So that's my backup. I will read it eventually anyway, but I want to try the new release first because I've heard quite a bit about it. And then my backup is this one, and I, both of them sound really, really fascinating. So those are the four that I'm hoping to get to for Women in Translation Month. And now let me tell you about the two buddy reads. Neither do I have in hand. One is coming in the mail to me. I'll tell you about that one first. This is a novel that is the first novel I have ever read that was translated into English by its author. And that is Catch the Rabbit by Lana Bastasic. And the novel, which she herself has translated from... Um, okay, well, she herself kind of jokes that nobody really knows how to describe what language has been translated from. But I believe the, the most correct is Bosnian. So translated from the Bosnian, but she says some people say it's translated from the Serbo-Croatian, some say translated from Bosnian, some say from Serbian. Uh, she herself says, the language I actually speak belongs to Bosnia. So I think that means it's translated from the Bosnian. Wow, this is very interesting. I am absolutely fascinated and I now see that it is getting rave reviews. This will be a buddy read, my first ever buddy read with the Irish author Ronan Hessian, who is a voracious reader of translated fiction, especially translated fiction by women. And the protagonist of this novel ends up in Dublin where Ronan Hessian lives. So what a perfect novel for him to read because he actually loves reading fiction from that part of Eastern Europe. And I think that's all I need to say about it. Two women on a road trip across Bosnia. And it goes from there and at least one of them ends up in Dublin. The other buddy read stems from a buddy read I did during Women in Translation Month last year, and that buddy read was of this novel from Greece, Three Summers by Margarita Liberaki, translated f um, from the Greek by Karen Van Dyck. It wasn't a buddy read, actually, but it was a, we had a Zoom discussion, the three of us. The other two were my uh, good friend Elektra, who is Greek and now lives in Istanbul, and my good friend Cecilia, who lives in Singapore. And uh, we... Um, had a discussion about this that was a very lively, very interesting discussion. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. 
And Margarita Liberaki's daughter is also a Greek novelist, and so we are going to have a very similar type of Zoom chat about Margarita Liberaki's daughter's novel. Her daughter's name is Margarita Carapano, and her novel in English is called Cassandra and the Wolf. It was originally published in 1976, and the translation is by N.C. Germanakos. Considered a contemporary classic in Greece, the lecture will tell us whether that's true. It established its 28-year-old author at the time as an uh, intensely original new talent. The opening premise is that Cassandra, a six-year-old girl, is given a doll. I put her to sleep in her box, but first I cut off her legs and arms so she'd fit. Later I cut her head off too so she wouldn't be so heavy. Now I love her very much. Okay, let's see what that's all about. <laughs> So, um, uh, much more briefly, let me tell you about uh, my two books for backup. One is this novel from Quebec. It's a Canadian classic, a French-Canadian classic, The Tin Flute by Gabriel Roy. And it's translated from the French by Alan Brown. And it is out of print, and I can't get an e-book copy. And I was so lucky here in Tokyo to find it. I've just recently joined a book-selling group for Tokyo people. English language books. Most of them are English language books here in Tokyo, and somebody was selling this. And it's out of, I couldn't get a copy on ebook. I couldn't get and I got it here in Tokyo. So I want to read it this year, whether I get to it for Women in Translation. Uh, Gabriel Roy was born in Manitoba in 1909. Died in Quebec City in 1983. This novel ushered in a new era of realism in Quebec fiction, and it is about a working class family in Montreal during World War II. And this is a fairly new release that I pre-ordered as soon as I read a description. I think it was, I saw it on my friend Lindy's Goodreads and immediately pre-ordered my own copy. Learning to Talk to Plants by Marta Orioles, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Translated from the Catalan by Mara Faye Latham. The protagonist, her male partner, died in a car accident only hours after he told her he was leaving her for another woman. So talk about a complicated grief. Learning to talk to plants. So that is what I have on my plate for Women of Translation Month. How about yourself? Thanks for watching.